Welcome to BNF Talks, a series of talks to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the British Nutrition Foundation. This talk is about dietary patterns and dementia and will provide an overview of the currently available evidence. So if we're talking about diet and dementia, at what life stage should we be considering our dietary patterns? Although we often think about dementia as an, a disease of ageing, in fact this diagram clearly shows that the development of dementia happens over some years, decades in fact. So perhaps we need to be thinking about what we're having in our diet well before our older years and in fact at a much earlier stage in life. And why look at dietary patterns? Why not single nutrients or single foods? Well, quite simply, we don't eat single nutrients or single foods. We eat a complex dietary pattern. And these nutrients and foods all have an interrelation and a correlation between them. So perhaps it's more um, productive to look at the whole pattern because the sum of the whole diet may be greater than the sum of its parts. I often show this slide because there's a public misconception that more nutrients are better. So the more vitamins and the more minerals we have, the more protein, the more essential fatty acids, the better. And this is not true. It's important to remember that the relationship between intake and health isn't linear and doesn't go on forever. So dietary patterns and dementia. Here are a few that you've probably heard about. The Mediterranean diet has been a lot in the news recently. You may well have heard of the Eat Well Guide, our healthy eating guidelines for the UK. Or people increasingly are talking about having more plant-based diets for health. And in fact, the studies that look at healthy dietary patterns versus the less healthy dietary patterns really consistently show evidence of decreased disease risk. And a healthy dietary pattern has some very typical characteristics. If we look at these patterns, off, they often have a higher consumption of vegetables, fruit, whole grains, low-fat dairy, seafood, nuts, seeds and legumes, and lower intakes of fatty and processed meats, refined grains, sugar-sweetened foods and drinks, lower in salt and lower in saturated fat. So in fact, there is a good deal of consistency between the types of dietary patterns that reduce chronic disease. But the good news is, as we can see from here, that there's a great deal of individual choice within these typically di typical dietary patterns. So although people may be looking for an optimal diet, just a one type diet, one size doesn't fit all, and there is some choice in, in these healthy patterns. Of course, our concern with dementia and prevention is high. Many of us now are at the stage where we have parents that may be at the age where they may be at risk of developing dementia. And it's possibly one of our greatest fears as we age that we'll go through some cognitive decline. But not only is there an interest in the lifestyle factors to prevent dementia, but there's also a great interest in uh, lifestyle factors to prevent other chronic diseases like cardiovascular disease. And interestingly, if we look at cardiovascular disease risk factors, these may be high blood pressure or diabetes, high body weight, obesity, smoking, lack of physical activity, these risk factors increase the risk of heart attacks, of stroke, but they also increase the risk of dementia. In fact, we do currently have um, government advice on prevention of dementia, and as you can see here, eat a healthy diet is clearly important. So let's explore this a bit more and look at one of these dietary patterns, the Mediterranean diet, which has been uh, featured probably the most off the dietary pattern in terms of research into the area. So what is a Mediterranean diet? Well, it's certainly more than olive oil alone and it's certainly more than geography. And actually, it's not just a single pattern. But again, it has these typical constituents, high consumption of plant foods, vegetables and fruits, legumes and cereals, lower consumption of meat, fish eaten in moderate amounts, dairy eaten in low moderate amounts, 
wine, obviously well known in the Mediterranean diet, but not consumed in excess. And an important factor, the olive oil, which is a monounsaturated fatty acid, is um, chosen as the chief culinary oil rather than fats that are high in saturated fatty acids. And research, research suggests that there's a protective association between the Mediterranean diet and cardiovascular disease. And it's also suggested that it may reduce the risk of cognitive decline mild cognitive impairment and dementia. And whenever we see these associations between dietary patterns and disease, we need to ask ourselves, is there a biologically plausible mechanism? And in fact, if we look at the nutrients in the Mediterranean diet, we can see that many of them have antioxidative and anti-inflammatory properties, and these can decrease vascular risk factors. So there's biological plausibility in terms of mechanism, but what has the evidence actually shown? Here we have a table of studies that have been published in the last uh, 10 years that look at the relationship between Mediterranean diet and mild cognitive impairment or dementia. A few things to note. One, that they're mainly taking place in the, um, in the United States, but the sample size for the vast majority is quite small that these studies are done in older people with quite short follow-up times, and that the Mediterranean diet is measured by a score that measures how adherent people are to it. But of course, what we really want to know is the outcome in the last column. And as you can see here, it's a little inconsistent. Some have shown a relationship between lower risk of dementia and a higher adherence to the Mediterranean diet, but some don't show this outcome. And in fact, this inconsistent pattern of results has, um, has continued, including the most recent studies. Let's think why that might be. Well, first of all, the bulk of the evidence in this area is observational. And as we know, observational studies are subject to confounding and bias. And this is because of the very many complex and interrelated factors that um, relate both to nutritional intake and to the development of dementia. So we're, we're thinking about um, confounding factors like intelligence, socioeconomic status, income, education, nutrient deficiencies, many different factors that could be confounding um, the observation. We also noted that the length of follow-up was short. In the first slide, we showed that dementia happens over a, a period of time, has a long development period, and so maybe it would be more biologically relevant for us to be looking at diets before four or five years before. And we need to be careful about the population characteristics of our group that we're studying. For example, we need to know what the uh, proportion of people that carry the ACOE4 allele, which is a, a risk factor for Alzheimer's disease. And to talk a little bit more about the methodology, we mentioned the MEDI-score. And here you can see how it's calculated. And we should note that this is sample-specific and not actual. So the actual um, score is based on whether the people are consuming more or less than an average. So it's, it's specific to the population that you're looking at not an actual amount consumed. And of course, this uh, diet score doesn't consider supplement taking or other foods that are included that are not within this list. When we have inconsistent results, in science, we would often turn to a systematic review. And here we have one conducted very recently and published in January 2017. And this shows that compared with the lowest, the highest Mediterranean diet score was associated with a reduced risk of developing cognitive disorders. And what this forest plot shows that when we combine all the studies that are looking either at mild cognitive impairment, Alzheimer's disease, or other dementias, there is a significant association between a higher adherence to the Mediterranean diet and a lower risk of development of the disease. 
So although the studies are observational, we can see that there looks to be some benefit of this type of diet. But what about other dietary patterns? There are other healthy dietary patterns that have also been explored in the literature. On this slide, I've highlighted the ones in green, so the ones that show a benefit, and the ones in red that do not. And again, similar to a di uh, Mediterranean dietary pattern, we can see some inconsistency here. So some diets are defined as, as healthy in comparison to less healthier diets show a benefit in reduction of dementia, and some of them don't. But what's really interesting when we look at all the dietary patterns, whether it's a UK healthy eating pattern, a Mediterranean diet, other food-based dietary guidelines from all over the world, we note that they're actually really broadly aligned. They include high intakes of fruit and veg, pulses, nuts and seeds, consumption of whole grains, consumption of fish, this high ratio of the monounsaturated fatty acid to saturated fatty acids. We see this in, in the Nordic diet where they use rapeseed oil as their main culinary oil. And again, lower consumption of meats, of added sugar, of salt, of saturated fat, and um, not an excess consumption of alcohol. But whenever we consider healthy eating patterns, we must always remember that these types of patterns are associated with other lifestyle and socioeconomic factors. In other words, people that are more likely to have healthy dietary patterns are also more likely not to smoke, not to have excessive alcohol consumption, to be physically active, to be of a healthy weight. They're also likely to be more educated and have higher incomes. One of the newer approaches is an interesting um, study done quite recently called the MIND study. And this combined two healthy dietary patterns, Mediterranean and DASH, but it also added some interesting variables. The authors looked in the literature for specific nutrients or foods that they had been shown or suggested to have an association with improved cognitive function. And they put this into the diet. So I'll give you an example. The authors looked for the relationship between fruit and um, improved cognitive function. And they didn't really find that much, but they did find quite a strong association with berry consumption. So the MIND diet scores for berries rather than fruit. When they looked at this diet in about a 1,000 participants, and they looked at it in relation to um, cognitive health using a global score or some specific scores that looked at things like memory, what we can see here is that people that had the strongest adherence to the MIND diet had the least cognitive decline. We know that in the average age of 81 for this study group, it's likely that, that in the period of study there would be cognitive decline. But those that adhered strongest to the MIND type diet had a significantly um, less cognitive decline than compared to those that had low adherence. And the study found that the Mediterranean diet on its own and the DASH diet on its own associated with decreased risk that MIND had the greatest effect. And they also showed that a high adherence to all three diets was associated with decreased risk, but even a moderate adherence to MIND also reduced the risk. We talked earlier about observational studies and the issues with uh, confounding and bias. So it's interesting to look at randomized control trials here. There have been very few of these, and in fact, the ones that have been undertaken are typically looking at um, cognitive function not as the primary purpose of the study. So if we look at Predimex, this was actually a coronary vascular disease prevention trial, but they looked at the Mediterranean diet with um, extra virgin olive oil or the Mediterranean diet of nuts in comparison to a control diet. And within the context of the study, they um, looked at cognitive function after a six and a half year follow up. And here we can see that they used two types of assessment for cognitive function, the mini mental state examination and the clock drawing test. And both Mediterranean diets, whether supplemented with um, olive oil or with nuts, showed a significant um, improvement to cognitive function. 
Similarly, the Oncorp study was a blood pressure lowering trial, and they looked at the dietary pattern DASH. Um, they looked at DASH with weight management and compared it to a control, and they looked at cognitive function after four months. And again, we can see that particularly the DASH diet with weight management, which included aerobic exercise and dietary counselling for weight loss, there was a significant um, improvement or a significant difference in the cognitive function test. The last randomised control trial that I want to discuss is an interesting one. As we know, the development of dementia is complex and multifactorial, and therefore perhaps multimodal interventions that are more than just nutrition would be helpful. And this Finnish study looked at this. They looked at healthy eating along with exercise, both strength exercises and aerobic activities, some brain training exercises and medical management in comparison to a control group that just had general health advice. And they looked at this in relation to quite a, a large series of neuropsychological tests at one year and at two years. And what this study showed was that either globally or for more specific cognitive functioning, the, the intervention, the multimodal intervention, had a significant positive impact, and that actually increased over time. So what can we conclude at the end of this talk? Overall, the evidence is that strong adherence to a Mediterranean dietary pattern is inversely associated with the risk of mild cognitive impairment and dementias, including Alzheimer's disease. But most of the evidence is observation, observational, and whilst many studies adjust for confounders, it's likely that residual confounding patterns remain. So I think the important endpoint of this uh, talk is that, yes, the Mediterranean dietary pattern is promising, but as we've seen, so are other healthy eating patterns. The patterns that define healthy eating are not difficult. Getting people to adopt them is. Thank you for listening to this BNS talk.